Well, happy Friday, class. We made it through another week. Um, we are on going to do section 12.3, and I believe I'm going to do 12.4 and 12.5 in, in uh, uh, the second section of chapter 12. Um, I debated whether I do three sections uh, on Wednesday, uh, but I decided just to do two, and then we'll deal with uh, three sections uh, for today. Um, as we go into the weekend, that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, just as a quick um, reminder, a quick uh, overview, uh, chapter 12, we are talking about annuities. Um, in chapter 11, we did lump sum compounding, um, but we know that we, don't, we can't always put in a lump sum, um, and so we want to make payments. And so as you think about things like mortgages and school loans, where you're not saving up a lump sum, um, you are paying against... Um, a future value uh, so that you can pay your loan off or if you're having a savings vehicle where you're making monthly payments um, and as we showed in our uh, table yes or for Wednesday if your savings you're increasing your future value but if it's a vehicle for paying off a loan here you have your present value and then you're paying with compounded interest uh, to a known amount all right. And again, an annuity is equal payments over equal amounts of time. We also talked about there's two different types. Uh, there's a simple and complex annuity. We are dealing with simple, where simple is the compounding period and the payment period are the same. Uh, they're th the same amount of compounding periods and the same amount of uh, payment periods in a year. That's a simple annuity. Complex is when they're different. All right. And uh, we also knew that there's an annuity certain and a contingent annuity. An annuity certain is when you know how many total compounding periods there are in the life of the annuity. And the contingent annuity is we don't know. And we were saying life insurance payouts and things like that. That would be a contingent annuity. All right. And then we, we talked about the uh, ordinary annuity and the annuity due. All right. An ordinary annuity is when a simple annuity, annuity, a simple annuity certain, if you want to put all the words together, um, an ordinary annuity is when the payment is made at the end of the compounding period. So you have the period, interest compounded, payment. Okay? Uh, an annuity due is when the payment is made at the beginning of the compounding period. So the payment is made, and then, and then depending on the payment, whatever that is, now you determine your compounding interest with the payment included, all right? So it's two different ways. We realized yesterday when we figured by hand, or when we did this Wednesday, is that uh, the annuity due adds one extra month of interest, so all the interest kind of gets shoved forward. Instead of calculating interest here, it gets shoved forward by one month, all right? So those are the differences between an ordinary annuity and annuity due, and we use tables to do that, all right? So with the ordinary annuity, we could just take our table, we could figure how many uh, compounding periods there are, and that would be how many times it's compounded per year times the year, and then small i, and this is sometimes, uh, uh, students might have difficulty remembering this, but the small i is the interest rate per compounding period. So again, if it is 6% per year, the nominal interest rate, and it's compounded monthly, that means you have to take 6% and divide it by 12. So that would be half a percent. That would be your I. And so you always have to figure out the I. And so in the tables, ordinary annuity, the tables were set up for an ordinary annuity, and you could just take the factor that they gave you and multiply that by your payment, and that would tell you the future value of the annuity. All right? Then we, for the annuity due, since the payment is at the end, we realized uh, that we're adding an extra month of interest. So this payment, uh, now when we use these ordinary tables, we have to be able to um, add one to the number of payment periods for the whole annuity. So when we find our N, that would be number of times per year times years, we'd have to add one. So that would add to the periods. But then when we found the factor, because that's the ordinary annuity factor, we had to subtract one from the factor. And that would give us the annuity due factor. All right? So that's what we talked about Wednesday and how to use the tables. Uh, and just as we did with uh, compounding lump sums, 
We could use tables or we can use formulas. And so we're going to learn the formulas today uh, for an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. All right. So the formulas for the future value of an ordinary annuity, which the payment is made at the end of the compounding period, equals PMT. That's the payment. So whatever the payment is, $100 a month, $200 a month, $100 semi-annually, whatever the payment is, times 1 plus I, quantity raised to the N, minus 1, divided by I. All right, so what's important as you do these, you see me every time I've done practice problems, I always find what is I and what is N. And I'm going to recommend as we do these formulas for annuities that we also write down what is 1 plus I. That helps us remember this. All right, now for ordinary annuity, not entirely important. We can use our calculator just to plug that in. But when we get to annuity due, it, it will be helpful if we, if we know that number. All right, so if your calculator stores a number, you can always store I, and that will help you do the problem. And if it can store more than one number, if you have memory for more than one number at a time, saving I in the memory bank and saving 1 plus I in the memory bank makes it a little easier to do the problem. All right, so as we walk through this, I'm just going to quickly now just tell you, this is how I would punch it into my calculator. Once I know what I and N are for the ordinary annuity, I would take 1 plus I, so punch that in your calculator, 1 plus I, raise that to the N power, subtract 1 from it. Once I have that value for my numerator, I divide it by I again. So again, if you if you have the save, that's helpful in your calculator. But if you don't have the save function on your calculator, just write it down. Write down as many digits as you can and then just punch it in. We can do that. So once you figure out what the numerator is, divide that by I. Now you have your factor, all right, that you're going to multiply your payment by. Multiply that by your payment and now you will have the future value of your ordinary annuity. Now we will practice this. So that is the ordinary annuity formula. Now let's get to our uh, the future value of an annuity due. And remember, annuity due is the payment is made at the end of the compounding period. I'm sorry, set it backwards. The annuity due is the payment is made at the beginning of the compounding period. Ordinary annuity, end of the compounding period. Uh, annuity due, beginning of the compounding period. All right? So... Again, the formula is very much the same. Payment times 1 plus i over, uh, raised to the n power, quantity raised to the n power, minus 1, all over i. But now, because we have the extra interest payment, you have to multiply that dot by 1 plus i. All right, that's how the mathematics works. So this is the case where I said it's handy if you can save 1 plus i. It just makes it easier because you'll follow the same calculator steps that I told you for annuity or ordinary annuity. 1 plus i, just add 1 plus i to the nth power, minus 1. Once you know the numerator, divide that by i. Multiply that by the payment. And then what you get there, you would then multiply by 1 plus i. And if you have it saved, then you just multiply it by that saved number. If not, that's where I'm saying writing it out ahead of time, you'll have that, and you can just multiply it by that number that you've written down. All right? So let's do a little practice here. Uh, that was this is on page 375 if we go to the next page all right here's the practice problem all right what is the future value of an ordinary annuity of a hundred dollars per month for three years at six percent interest compounded monthly all right so this is ordinary annuity the payment is made at the end of the period compounding period all right my payment is a hundred dollars so payment is a hundred dollars and the total number of years is three. So in this problem, my I uh, is 6% divided by 12 because it's compounded monthly. So 6% divided by 12 is half a percent. So uh, 0 0.005 is the decimal. And my N is going to be three years times, again, compounded monthly, three times 12. So 36. So I is 0 0.005 n is 36 and my 1 plus i is going to be 1.005 hallelujah so that's the ordinary annuity so this is how they figure it 
For the future value of an ordinary annuity, we use I as half percent, we already figured that out, and N is 36. All right, so three years times 12 is 36. Why did it stop? Oh, sorry, I thought it stopped. I got that on camera, great job. All right, so if we keep going here, um, so we have 36, so we figured that out. So we can just punch it in, the formula, future value equals payment times was one plus I over N minus one, so we punch it in. So one plus zero, zero, five, raised to the 36 power, they just keep going down here. So 1.005 raised to the 36th power is this long number here, minus 1. So they subtract 1 from it. Divide that by I again, 0 0.005, which gives us 39.33601. So that's our factor. And if you wanted, you could probably go to the tables and figure that out. But this is how you do it in the formula. You multiply that by your $100 payment a month. All right. Your future value should be $3,933.61. Now that's the ordinary annuity, the payment is made at the end of the compounding period or at the end of the month. All right. And uh, 12 months times 100, I'm sorry, 36 months times 100 is $3,600. So we made $333 interest. All right. And again, it gives you the calculator, what you can punch in. Okay. So now the ordinary, uh, we did that for ordinary annuity. Now the annuity due. All right. Um, so to solve the problem as an annuity due, rather than the ordinary annuity, we multiply what we got up here for our factor, this factor right here, 39.336105 times 100, all right? So once we know the ordinary annuity, we can just take this and we're just multiplying it by 1 plus i. Isn't that interesting? All right, so the future value of an ordinary an or annuity due equals 1 plus i times the future value of the ordinary annuity. Remember, I showed you that in the equation here. The difference is, we're, for the annuity due, we're just multiplying all of this times 1 plus i. All right, so we can do that once we figure out the ordinary annuity. The annuity due is just the ordinary annuity times 1 plus i. So we know 1 plus i is 1.005. We multiply that by $3,933.61. And we get $3,953.28. All right, so we get about 20 more dollars. All right, so because we made the payment at the beginning of the term, I almost said semester there, at the beginning of the semester. Nope, the beginning of the compounding term. We then get an extra 20 bucks of interest. All right, so they give you the calculator sequence again. So I'm going to stop the video now. What I'd like you to do is practice these things, okay? So here, Katrina uh, invested $250 at the end of every three months for five periods. So every three months is quarterly. 8% interest compounded quarterly. So it is simple, simple annuity. Um, so if it's compounded quarterly, Figure out your I um, and figure out how many compounding periods there are. And then it asked how much is Katrina invested worth at five years. Okay. And it says N, so that's ordinary annuity. And then if she invested at the beginning, which makes it an annuity due, then how much would she have? All right. Go ahead. Figure that out. I'll come back with the answer.